My name is, are you ready for me to start now? Okay. <laughs> My name is Ari Barnes. I'm in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, I'm a member of the Bahamas Human Rights Network. Uh, we work on local human rights issues and work on coordinating with other NGOs here in the Bahamas to try and assist uh, human rights issues here. On the whole, the human rights situation in the Bahamas is not bad, but there are issues which do arise as in any country. Uh, our biggest issue is with migrants. Because of our geographical location, we have a constant and large influx of Haitian and Cuban nationals who pass through the territorial waters of the Bahamas trying to get to the United States. These people are then uh, taken in by the Defense Force of the Bahamas, held in, in custody at a detention center here, uh, and many of them uh, are repatriated back to Haiti. The Cubans are a different situation because they have some political clout from the United States, and so they often are uh, held sometimes even over a year here before their cases are resolved. They're passing through our waters trying to reach the United States uh, because of where we're located. Uh, we're a large archipelago of over 700 islands. This creates a situation where uh, it, they almost have to pass through our waters to try and get to where they want to go to mainly, which is the United States. Some of them have relatives here in the Bahamas and you know try to make it to them, uh, but this creates a illegal migrant concern here in the Bahamas because we are a very small country, only about 340,000 people. So uh, we, we can't absorb a huge influx. It's estimated now that there are between 60 and 80,000 people of Haitian descent here in the Bahamas, and many of them are here illegally. So it's, uh, it's a concern for the government and for the average Bahamian. There's concern because we are a small country. They fear, fear that they would take jobs of local people. Um, that once they're integrated into society here, they're you know having medical care and, and schooling and so on paid for by Bahamians, and they feel it's disproportionate to what they actually contribute here. Um, generally, we feel that is not the case. The Haitian community who have uh, established themselves here in the Bahamas actually work very hard and do contribute to local society, but it's difficult to get uh, people to accept that when other people are struggling to find a job themselves. Well, we work with other NGOs. We try to keep track of what's going on. Uh, we you know, work in connection, say, with Amnesty International and uh, other groups. Uh, but uh, these concerns, uh, we try to make them more worldwide known because we're such a, a small country, often these things aren't noticed. So um, try and also to support the migrants when they're here, that they're treated humanely, uh, get proper medical attention if needed as well as being housed and fed properly. It's hard to say actually because they often aren't able to contact us. What I'm getting is secondhand often. We feel it's, it's fairly credible information. Essentially our concern is that the patients who come in are often never able to see a doctor uh, and so they can sometimes be carrying diseases um, held in the detention center here in Nassau. We know that the guards there have concerns because they see these people with disease and the doctors don't see them and they're afraid that they might be able to catch the disease and bring these things into the general population as well. So there's concern both from the guards side and from the migrant side as to their health. There, we also have heard numerous times that they're not fed properly. 
Uh, they're supposedly being fed three times a day, but the information we get is that it's only twice a day. It's not a large quantity of food, and it's not healthy food, really. We have concerns because some of them may be refugees, but these are never being heard. Um, in the case of the Haitians who arrive here in the Bahamas, they often are repatriated before we even know they're here. And the government that way is able to hide them from human rights defenders. Um, and in the case of Cubans, though, as I say, because they have, uh, generally they're not trying to get to the Bahamas, they're trying to get to the United States, which is very close to the Bahamas. Uh, they often have a problem where they're detained for lengthy periods and uh, aren't able to contact to legal representation to try and move their cases forward more quickly. Uh, it's just a, a lengthy, difficult situation for them. And we have had incidents where they have uh, raised concern uh, when they can get information out and have even tried to, uh, you know, cause bodily harm to themselves to raise attention to the to the situation. So there's been a number of situations like that that uh, make it very difficult for us to get in and see them and to even have like uh, their ambassadors get into the detention center and, and see if there are concerns there. Because there's been several of these cases, they've become very guarded about uh, letting human rights workers in. Uh, they work with the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, but they don't really investigate to see if any of these people are refugees and not just migrants. Uh, very few of them. Uh, sometimes it's only three or four people a year get refugee status. We have a strong reason to believe that the numbers, because of the conditions in these countries, may be much higher numbers of actual refugees trying to get refugee status. But uh, they aren't often able to, to make the connections to get the application done to get a refugee status, which is a concern. Uh, no. No, they, they do not want to accept migrants. They, because we're you know part of the international community, uh, they do have a detention center where they try to uh, detain them until their cases can be sorted out. But uh, it's very difficult. They often have housed the children there, which is uh, not what is uh, acceptable by international policy. Uh, but they don't have a f way of facilitating the parents and the children being together in an acceptable manner. They don't want to be seen as abusing people's rights, but it's uh, uh, they, they partly we just don't even have the resources to deal with this. As we're such a small country, it's very difficult to have this large an influx in and and rationalize it. So they're, they're, in fairness to the Bahamas, they it is a very large problem for a very small country. Uh, well, uh, just a concern for other people. It's what raised my interest back in the 70s and 80s. And as uh, I used to be a member of Amnesty International and still am an international member, but uh, Certainly they exposed uh, the problems here and, and came here and did research on it uh, about 12 years ago. That has led a number of local people to be concerned about the issue as well. So uh, it's something where we just try to monitor it, make sure that the government is living up to their actual responsibilities and, and work on them with, with other human rights issues as well. Rights of women, uh, the death penalty is still in effect here, though it's not been used. Uh, things like that we can also work with other NGOs on to try and support and, and build a coalition to make cer certain that human rights issues are respected and monitored and acted upon properly by the government. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a big question. Uh, well, uh, 
continue to educate the public and make them aware that many of these people make large contributions here, uh, that they shouldn't be feared uh, as much as having an understanding of what they've gone through to be here, that this may not have been their ultimate desired destination, but uh, that while they're here, we need to treat them with the respect that we would any other human being. 